Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. Today it's day two of lobster season. Let's see if we can go catch a few. Well, hey guys, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. We are out here catching the lobster today. So uh, a little windier than anticipated, but uh, we'll make it work, so stay tuned. Get out there early, but at least it's quiet. Not many boats out. I think everyone got their butt kicked the first day, and day two is usually quieter. Only ones out there are us, and uh, you know, we see our cousins. It is windy. It is not like the day they forecasted, is it? Like three miles an hour, it's like solid 15. We got um, hit a lot of the spots from the day before. Remember, that's not necessarily a bad thing to hit the same spots again. As long as the moon's not really full and bright, they'll walk around and replenish. But just know there's probably going to be less there the second day than there was the first day. So spend even less time there. Hit it quick and move on. as a protective face shield. Dad's out there. Hey, if I hadn't done it quick enough, well, come on, give it to me. Turned out to be a pretty tough day. Uh, we hit all the other spots, and then turns out, you know, we just we just hit them so quick, got what we could, and um, we didn't get to our limit. You know, six of us on the boat this morning, we're trying to get to 36. We realized, okay, we just need to go back to that one and two area. You know, work the area, troll it. It's kind of funny. This area doesn't seem big, you know? And sometimes you're trolling around and you're like, surely I've hit every single spot over here. And you know, there are other boats here too, especially as the afternoon went on. But you just keep finding lobster. I mean, somehow it's almost like a, like a magic hat. You just keep going back in there. And oh, here's a hole, you know, you hit it from this angle, that angle, and just new stuff pops up. We get there and unfortunately it's kind of weird because by the time we get there, we hit all our other spots so fast, we get to this spot and the current's still ripping, you know, kind of by the bridges. And when the tides are changing, it's really hard to lobster there. Normally we wouldn't lobster when the tide's running. We would time it and come back when the tide gets slack. You usually have maybe an hour on either side of the slack tide, 30 minutes of slack, you know, an hour on either side. But we're kind of like, you know, it's gonna be slack in a couple hours you know, by our estimate, it's not always accurate. 
and we're like, you know, there's no sense of us running all the way in just to pretty much have to turn and run all the way back. So we took Christopher, who loves being in the water. Uh, I volunteered, basically your best swimmers, because it's a fast current, you know, and we get in the, or in the water and the boat's pulling us and we just gotta fight it. You know, when we see one, you, it's like you're sprinting in the water, you're swimming almost as fast as you can to stay there with that lobster and then let go and go try to get it. Usually like, I think me and Chris are kinda came up with the same idea together is when we see one, you always have the boat going against the current. Cause if it's going with the current, it's just too fast. You can't turn yourself around and go find it. You know, you make put it in neutral, you can drift back and then go forward again slowly at another angle. You can do that, but you do want to go into the current. And basically when we see one, we're like, okay, I'm going for that one. Well, I'm letting the boat pull me and I'm watching it. And just probably when my fins are over the lobster, take a deep breath, you know, building up some air cause I'm about to use it really fast. And then I'll go down, get right to the bottom, hug the bottom where the current's not as bad, quickly tickle it out and get it. And you pretty much got one shot because after that, you know, you're out of air, you can't swim, you can't keep up. So you gotta make it count. The boat driver will try to, um, you know, if you're in the boat driving, best thing you can do to help your drivers out, don't worry about turning back and trying to pick up your drivers, which is what we would normally do if it wasn't a bad current. Basically, go forward when you see one let go, pay attention, have someone in the boat paying attention. When you see them let go, I just put it in neutral, maybe a little reverse, and I'm just trying to keep the boat in one spot. So the boat's not moving forward, but the current's not pulling it back either, so it's just hanging there. So then your divers, if need be, can grab the rope, hang on for a second, they haven't lost their spot, you know, that kind of helps them out the best when it's a really strong current. So that's a little tip for you to keep that in mind. It's pretty useful. Kind of hard to do sometimes, take some practice, but if you can get it going, it'll help you out. Well guys, it's going a little slow right now. Um, lobster didn't seem to quite replenish like we'd hoped. Maybe they didn't move around at night. Maybe it was too bright. But uh, we're back here trolling. The current's kind of strong now, but we'll at least be here when the tide's right. So hopefully we can uh, knock a few more out now. All right, guys, we're very close. It's been really tough today, but we just got about flat tide. We need three more lobster to get our limit for the day. Christopher's off, so maybe only two more. It's been a tough one today. So many shorts, it's crazy. I get frustrated. The water for like an hour fighting the current. But uh, I think we're close. It's going good other than this annoying beeping from the motor telling me it's time to service the engines. But we're close, so um, we're all feeling better. We have a double let go here. Kind of like a fish on. That people let go of the ropes and we know they're after a lobster. One more lobster. One more freaking lobster. Take it back, number 36. A good job, guys. We did it. Let me see the 19 or 2019. In the Thankfully. It wasn't an easy one. No, it wasn't. Not for us. Kayla, we were hungry far before you got hungry. It was cool. You what? We were starving. We got like, we gotta catch some more. We're like, Even Jeremy is like, yeah, we can get more. No, Jeremy was, you should watch the footage. <laughs> I mean, season 2019. Done. There's a grind. It was tough. We attribute our success only to the fact that we didn't quit. Now yeah, catch it. She caught one. Wrap it up. Don't let it go. Well, she's got one. I don't have to have any artificial names or artificial angles on board. Hey, I was going to tell you, when we were at the bridge, we were catching them, but the current kept blasting us off. Right in between that 
first and third pole on that uh, channel for it. It's about six and a half or seven. And just watch them there in that pole. I got my left. Well, you can come back with us. <laughs> <laughs> Only Drew and uh, Tammy's got to stay to get theirs. Brandon says we can stay and help him with eight more. No. <laughs> See y'all later. See ya. It's lunch time. Yeah, it's past lunch time. <laughs> hey, we can stop. Yeah, stop that check. We, it took y'all so long, we changed the oil. <laughs> it was the longest day we've spent lobstering on mini season in, I don't know, more than 10 years, I'm sure. Maybe 15 or maybe even longer. You know, normally an hour, second day, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Still in time for breakfast, but today we were out there, I think it's almost one o'clock. So it felt so good when that last lobster came in the boat. We're like, yes, we're done. Time to go home. We did it, mission accomplished. To clean soft shells, it's pretty easy. We just cut them right in half, the whole body right down the middle with some shears. Then we flip them out and just kind of wash the guts out and peel all the guts out so it's just the meat that's in the head and of course the tail. For both hard and soft shell lobster, we like to split the tail. Of course the soft shell is already split because we split the whole thing when we cleaned it. For the hard shell, a little tip for you, is peel out almost all of the meat except for a little bit at the tail. Just kind of like pre-peel it and set it back in and then season it. That way when it cooks, it's gonna kind of cook out and then when you go to eat it, you're not having to fight that meat to peel out of the shell. It's just kind of easily comes right on out. So that's a little quick tip for you. We season with butter, salt, some pepper, and lemon juice. So that's all there is to it. You just use a few basic spices and seasoning. You, you can put other stuff on it if you like it. The advantage to soft shell is that you get all that meat that's up in the head. So you get more meat. And I think that meat that's in the head and the whole lobster in general it's just more tender, it tastes a little bit better. You know, you get more meat. It's kind of a nice surprise to try to eat. So if you get a soft shell lobster, be sure to, to cook it up because it'll be really good, especially fresh. Cook the meat until it's nice and white. It might take uh, around 12 minutes, depending on what your grill temperature is at, but you want to make sure you don't overcook it because then it's going to get really chewy and rubber. You don't want that. So watch it carefully. The good thing with fresh lobster, as with any, you know, seafood, when you get it fresh, you know, it's already really good to eat. So there's not a lot of preparation. You know, you ain't gotta soak it in anything. I mean, depending on, I guess, the fish, but quality meat like lobster and stuff like that, you know, it doesn't take a lot of preparation. You know, you get it fresh, put a few basic seasons on it, throw it on the grill, and bam, you've had a long day from lobster and you're hungry. It's a good, quick, tasty meal. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and We'll see you next time.